Carbon farming is a whole farm approach to increasing CO2 capture on working landscapes by employing measures that have been shown to increase the rate at which CO2 is taken from the atmosphere and stored in plant material and soil organic matter. While carbon farming has been hailed as the next approach to reducing climate change, others believe we may be getting greenwashed. Stay tuned to find out all the inside details. First up, carbon farming has been a hot topic recently in the farming world, and many wonder is this a real solution or are they simply greenwashing. The practice of carbon farming has been hailed by corporations, politicians, and environmentalists alike as the feel-good climate answer of the day. In their climate plans, several top Democratic presidential candidates mention the possibility of changing farming practices to absorb more carbon dioxide. Soil is the next frontier for storing carbon. Joe Biden announced plans or joint campaigns to direct their suppliers to implement the techniques or pay farmers who do so in order to gain so-called offset credit. Businesses can claim credit for carbon dioxide removed from the environment without reducing emissions from their own operations. Furthermore, some venture capital-backed enterprises have launched soil offsets marketplaces, allowing businesses and nonprofits to buy credits from farms. Indigo Agriculture, for example, has funded more than $850 million to date to expand its soil carbon business and other businesses. And now the Climate Action Reserve, a powerful California nonprofit, is working on criteria for soil carbon offsets, which would provide a seal of approval that would encourage more people and corporations to purchase these credits. However, there is one major flaw. There is little proof that carbon farming delivers on all of its so-called promises. According to a National Academy's assessment released just last year, the world's farmlands have the capacity to store billions of tons of carbon dioxide in the soil each year. However, which agricultural techniques work and to what extent across varied soil types, depths, crop kinds, climate conditions, conditions and time periods remains a mystery. It's uncertain whether the procedures can be implemented over lengthy periods of time and on a larger scale across the globe's fields without jeopardizing food supply. Furthermore, there are major differences in opinion about what it will take to accurately measure and certify that farms are truly removing and storing more carbon dioxide. These uncertainties exacerbate the well-documented difficulties in establishing a dependable carbon offsets program. According to studies, these systems frequently overestimate estimate reductions due to economic, environmental, and political pressures to issue high amounts of offset certificates. Observers argue the programs can also lead to gamesmanship and greenwashing, undermining actual progress on climate change. As Climate Action Reserve looks to expand the usage of these credits, critics worry that the organization is on the verge of establishing a norm that will encourage such behavior. So what exactly is carbon farming? Photosynthesis serves as a glasshouse gas pump, sucking CO2 from the air and converting it to sugars that are stored in leaves, stalks, and roots or discharged into the soil. Farmers can improve the amount of carbon remaining in their fields by planting cover crops between harvests and drilling seeds instead of continuously tilling the soil. Carbon farming is a way of thinking about how to engage with the agro-ecosystem processes that drive system change. Carbon farming recognizes that solar energy is the driving force behind farm ecosystem dynamics and that carbon is the energy's carrier within the farm system. The Carbon Cycle Institute has created a model land management system that prioritizes carbon as the organizing element. Land management in this approach improves carbon capture rates, boosts the availability of critical ecosystem services such as water, strengthens agricultural resilience, and mitigates climate change. However, the process in California demonstrates the difficulties in defining dependable, widely applicable standards. Such regulations ensure that the farmers who are paid to carry out the techniques are actually lowering carbon dioxide levels in the environment, giving people and businesses wishing to buy credits more confidence. Now, what exactly is greenwashing and is this happening with carbon farming? Greenwashing is the practice of creating a false impression or presenting incorrect information about how a company's products are better for the environment. Greenwashing is when a firm makes an unsupported claim to lead customers to believe that its products are ecologically friendly. Greenwashing firms, for example, can claim that their products are made from recycled materials or have energy-saving features. Although some environmental claims may be somewhat valid, greenwashing corporations often will exaggerate their claims in order to deceive their consumers. Greenwashing, sometimes known as green shine, is an attempt to profit from the increased demand for environmentally friendly products, whether it implies they are more natural, healthier, chemical-free, recyclable, or waste less natural resources. When the hotel business produced one of the most prominent examples of greenwashing in the 1960s, the phrase was coined to conserve 
preserve the environment, they posted posters in hotel rooms encouraging guests to reuse their towels. The hotels were able to save money on laundry. Companies have participated in greenwashing by advertising their clean energy or pollution reduction initiatives in press releases and commercials. In actuality, the firm may not be making a significant commitment to environmental projects. So, in terms of carbon farming and these large companies backing it, if carbon sequestration is pursued without regard for biodiversity or rural livelihoods, and investments are made in false solutions such as monoculture plantations or intensive no-till farming, carbon farming risks becoming a meaningless buzzword. In other farming news, Indian farmers are implementing these eco-farming methods and seeing great success. P. Ramesh, a 22-year-old groundnut farmer, was losing money in 2007. Ramesh was applying a cocktail of pesticides and fertilizers across his 2.4 hectares in the Anantapur area of southern India, as was and still is most of Indian farmers. This is because farming is difficult in this desert-like environment, which receives less than 600 millimeters of rain most years. He then stopped using the drugs in 2017. Quote, my productivity and income have increased since I started using regenerative agricultural approaches like agroforestry and natural farming, unquote, he says. Planting woody perennials, trees, bushes, palms, bamboos, and so on, alongside agricultural crops is known as agroforestry. To enhance soil nutrient levels, one natural farming method calls for substituting all chemical fertilizers and pesticides with organic stuff like cow dung, cow urine, and jaggery, a sort of solid dark sugar derived from sugarcane. Ramesh also added papaya, millets, okra, eggplant, and other crops to his original groundnuts and tomatoes. Additionally, he no longer uses diesel to operate his groundwater pumps after installing solar panels. He also has an incentive to only pump the amount of water he requires because he may sell the electricity he does not use. According to 2020 research in carbon management, India's carbon emissions, which are 2.88 billion metric tons per year, might decline by 45 million to 62 million tons per year if all farmers switch to solar. Out of an estimated 20 million to 25 million total groundwater pumps, the country now has roughly 250,000 solar irrigation pumps. So, you can see they're making a huge effort in the right direction, making real positive change along the way. So, what are some benefits of implementing agroforestry? Well, agroforestry systems have the potential to be more beneficial than traditional agricultural practices. They can deliver higher productivity, as well as social, economic, environmental benefits, and a wider range of ecological goods and services. First up, biodiversity. It has been reported that agroforestry systems have higher biodiversity than conventional agricultural systems. In a given region, two or more interacting plant species provide a more complex environment that can support a greater range of animal life. Agroforestry is specifically beneficial to biodiversity for a number of reasons. First of all, it provides a more diverse habitat than a traditional agricultural system because the tree component creates biological niches for a variety of creatures above and below ground. Secondly, the life cycles and food chains linked with such diversification start an agroecological succession that results in functional agroecosystems with long-term viability. Next is soil and plant growth. Ground cover plants such as naturally occurring grasses in agroforestry systems can buffer depleted soil from erosion. When compared to short cycle cropping methods, these help to stabilize the soil by increasing coverage. In order to avoid erosion, soil cover is crucial. Agroforestry can also help to clean the water by reducing fertilizer and soil surface runoff. Trees can assist reduced water runoff by reducing water flow and evaporation, allowing for more penetration into the soil. Nutrient intake can be higher in row cropped fields, reducing nutrient loss into streams. Next, the adaptation to climate change. Implementing this eco-farming method can help mitigate climate change while also providing adaptive benefits. A case study in Kenya demonstrated that agroforestry boosted carbon storage and livelihoods for small-scale farmers at the same time. Maintaining the diversity of tree species, particularly land use and farm size, are crucial concerns in this scenario. Poor smallholder farmers have turned to agroforestry as a way to adapt to climate change, particularly in recent years, and seen great results. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about carbon farming and whether it's a real solution to climate change or are we being greenwashed? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.